Alrighty, welcome back. Um, this is a follow-up video talking about the anode bevel. Um, in the first video, we talked about the anode bevel, and we talked about the line focus principle explaining um, focal spot sizes, uh, actual and effective. In this video, and, and that related to you know primarily um, image sharpness, so some geometric details. What we're going to talk about mostly in this section um, really has to do with uh, exposure. Um, along the long axis of the table. So the anode heel effect. The anode heel effect is due to um, the anode itself, the shape of the anode, and physics because, um, you know, um, the anode is an attenuator. It's, it's something made of matter and it, it will absorb some of the x-ray beam. So x-rays traveling in that general direction of the anode are absorbed and x-rays traveling in the general direction away from the anode are absorbed less. So the anode heel effect itself is simply defined as a variation in the x-ray intensity along the longitudinal tube axis. So along the length of the table, there's a variation in um, x-ray intensity. X-ray intensity falls off rapidly towards the anode end of the beam. Um, and that is to say that it increases slightly toward the cathode end of the beam. That would be measured like from the central ray point. Um, Shown here to demonstrate it, a flash exposure made uh, by placing the film vertically um, as opposed to the x-ray beam. So the x-ray beam, uh, rather the film would be standing vertical on the tabletop uh, arranged along the long axis of the table. The anode heel effect, again, is defined, uh, rather, the anode heel effect and the anode heel is defined as the lower back corner of the anode disc. Um, and as I said, because um, uh, because electromagnetic radiation x-rays are um, attenuated by matter the anode is made of very dense matter so any x-rays traveling toward the anode end of the of the uh, the anode heel um, end of the um, anode from the source of x-rays uh, will be gr uh, attenuated greater than x-rays traveling in the direction towards the cathode so demonstrated here you see uh, you know, a high-speed electron interacting with the anode. We have, remember, recall we have two different types of interactions, characteristic and Brems interactions. Regardless of which those are, let's assume x-rays are being created. So in this case, a high-speed electron creates three photons from one spot. Um, one photon travels towards the cathode end, one travels roughly downward, one travels towards the heel of the anode. The photon traveling toward the cathode end, back from where the electron came from, uh, will be largely unattenuated by the anode. The photon traveling straight downward will have greater attenuation, um, and the photon traveling towards the heel of the anode, the back corner of the anode, will be attenuated greatest. So, from a particular point of origin, x-rays emitted toward the anode heel must pass through more filtration, more matter, to escape the anode. X-rays emitted towards the cathode have the least material to pass through. So again, due to attenuation of electromagnetic radiation, as it moves through matter, the intensity, as measured at the image receptor, will be greater at the cathode end and less at the anode end. Um, what can make this worse? The heel effect is worsened with longer field sizes, that's longer sizes along the length of the table, steeper anode bevel angles, that is a smaller anode bevel, such as those shown on um, angiographic equipment, you know, those anode bevels that are somewhere in the 7 to 10 degree mark, rather than the, the 15 to 17 degree, which is typical of diagnostic x-rays. Larger focal spot sizes and shorter SIDs. All of these things increase the anode heel effect. So shown here, the effect is uh, worsened with steeper anode bevel angles. Um, and as I said, for angiographic and other special procedures, this can limit the length of the image receptor or field that would be usable. So shown here, a steeper, S, a steeper anode bevel at 17 degrees would have a, a more drastic anode heel effect. How do you use it? How do we use the anode heel effect? Because it's not just a detrimental thing. It, it's something that we can use to, uh, to, a, to a great effect. Uh, that is because, uh, uh, you know, many structures on the body, many, m many anatomy, uh, anatomic structures on the body are... Um, in effect wedge shaped. They are thicker at one end and thinner at the other end. Take for instance the femur. 
Okay. Thicker, uh, as far as bony and, uh, excuse me, as far as soft tissue anatomy, thicker at the hip end and thinner at the, at the, at the distal femur, the knee, um, or in this case, the humerus. Okay. So as they show here, conventional radiographs of the AP humerus show an unbalanced exposure with the anode placed towards the shoulder, and um, that's on the left, and a balanced, a more balanced exposure with the um, anode placed at the elbow. So in this case, they've annotated the images showing you where the cathode and anode are. You can clearly see in image A that the elbow is a lot darker, has more radiographic density, and the uh, shoulder is a lot brighter. If you flip-flop those things, you can sort of use the anode heel to great effect. The elbow, which needs less exposure than the shoulder, we orient the anode towards that end, or we orient the patient's elbow towards the anode end, and the cathode uh, end towards the shoulder, where we have the strongest rays and the body part is thickest in that area. This works great for things like thoracic spines, lumbar spines, femurs, um, in this case, humeruses, um, any wedge-shaped body part could benefit from the anode heel effect. <clears throat> the anode typically is on the left side of the table as the radiographer standing facing the x-ray tube at the table. Um, so some examples of suggested positioning. Um, AP chest, okay, this would be a, 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 a supine chest, um, would be patient's head to the left. AP T-spine, patient's head to the left, putting the cathode end towards the bottom of the T-spine. AP femur, patient's head to the right, putting the thicker end of the patient's femur towards the cathode side. AP foot, putting the heel of the foot towards the cathode side, so patient's head to the right. And AP humerus, patient's head to the right. Um, this last uh, uh, diagram shows a percentage of intensity at the central ray. Um, experimental measurements showing the intensity of the x-ray beam as low as 31% at 20 degrees toward the anode and as high as 105% at 12 degrees towards the cathode end. So these are angles as measured from the anode bevel. Um, so showing, you know, down towards the, uh, towards the anode end as low as 31% at a zero degree angle. That's the angle matching the anode bevel, 31%. 100% is measured from the central ray. That's why we can get numbers like 105% at 32 degrees um, away from the anode towards the cathode end. So the beam is actually stronger than the middle, um, more towards the cathode end. The beam is weaker than the middle um, towards the anode end. I hope this um, short little video was helpful. Um, again, this is a two-parter. So this is the second part of a two-part video explaining the anode bevel and um, its geometric and exposure effects. Um, please follow up for more information.